Welcome to part two of this survey of uniform polyhedra. In part one, I covered the simpler shapes with tetrahedral and octahedral symmetry. This part steps up a gear and starts to look at some of the shapes with icosahedral symmetry. As shown in an earlier video, each platonic solid can be modified in various ways to produce different Archimedean solids. The same operations can be done on the Kepler-Poinsot solids to create concave uniform polyhedra. Starting with the great dodecahedron, truncation gives us, not surprisingly, the truncated great dodecahedron. Further truncation, a process called rectification, gives us the dodeca-dodecahedron. This has 12 pentagons and 12 pentagrams that sit above the pentagons. It's a quasi-regular polyhedron, so all its edges are the same. If we expand a great dodecahedron, a process also known as cantillation, we get a rhombi dodeca dodecahedron with squares separating the pentagons and pentagrams. We can then twist the pentagrams to get a snub dodeca dodecahedron. Some of these non-convex snubs have quite an intricate structure. Zooming into this section, for example, shows a complicated area where three edges come close to each other but don't quite meet, resulting in a complicated intersection of three red faces and very thin slivers of red and blue. Many quasi-regular polyhedra can be truncated to generate a new polyhedron, but if we try it for the dodeca-dodecahedron, it goes wrong. The pentagonal faces truncate nicely to decagons, but the pentagrams truncate to strange 10 over 2 gons, which aren't regular. There is a uniform polyhedron called the truncated dodeca-dodecahedron, but it's not a true truncation. It has small triangular holes in the surface, leading to larger internal spaces. Turning to the great icosahedron, truncation gives us the truncated great icosahedron. And rectification yields the great icosidodecahedron. The great icosahedron can be expanded, but you have to move the faces inwards through the center and out the other side to produce this beautiful shape, the non-convex great rhombicosidodecahedron. A snub can also be created by expanding and twisting. This great snub icosidodecahedron is probably the simplest of all the concave snubs. As with the dodecahedron, the great icosidodecahedron doesn't truncate because of its pentagrams. But there is a quasi-truncation, this magnificent shape. Moving on to the Kepler polyhedra, they also don't truncate usefully because they're made of pentagrams. A small stellated dodecahedron truncates to a simple dodecahedron. Strictly speaking, it's a treble dodecahedron, with each apparent face being two pentagons from the truncated pentagram plus the truncating pentagon. Rectification, the deeper truncation, it's hard to see because the cuts are mostly inside the dodecahedron, but it ends up as the dodeca-dodecahedron, which we've already seen. Similarly, the great stellated dodecahedron truncates to a treble icosahedron and rectifies to a great icosidodecahedron. We'll now look at how faceting can lead to more polyhedra. There are at least three ways of faceting a dodecahedron. Its faces can be replaced by pentagrams in the obvious way, but less obviously, triangles will also fit, as will pentagons. These three all have the same edge arrangement, so any two of them can be combined to get a uniform polyhedron. The triangles and pentagrams make the small ditrigonal icosidodecahedron, the triangles and pentagons form the great ditrigonal icosidodecahedron, and the pentagrams and pentagons 
make the ditrigonal dodecahedron. The ditrigonal in these names refers to their vertex figures, which in each case is a hexagon with two different side lengths alternating. As a side note, there is another faceting of the dodecahedron by squares. This might be mistaken for another uniform polyhedron, but it separates into five cubes, so it's actually a polyhedron compound. The icosidodecahedron, in addition to its triangles and pentagons, can be faceted by decagons running through the center. These can be combined with the original triangles to form the small icosihemidodecahedron, or with the pentagons to form the small dodecahemidodecahedron. But the icosidodecahedron can also be faceted with another edge arrangement, using pentagons, hexagons, or pentagrams. These can be paired to form more uniform polyhedra. Pentagons and hexagons form the great dodecahemicosahedron. Pentagons and pentagrams form the dodecahedron, which we already know about, and hexagons and pentagrams form the small dodecahemicosahedron. And finally, the rhombicosidodecahedron can be faceted with decagons, this time not passing through the exact centre. Adding back the original squares, it's the small rhombidodecahedron, or adding back both the triangles and the pentagons produces the small dodecacosidodecahedron. That's all for part two. Keep an eye out for part three, which will discuss more of these beautiful shapes.